A test weight is when a baby is weighed immediately before and after a feed to determine the amount of volume taken during a feed at the breast. For those breastfeeding babies at SickKids whose intake needs to be closely monitored, this is an important tool. Test weights are important because the medical team and families can rely on them to determine accurate breast milk intake assessment. Babies may be allowed to start breastfeeding earlier if the volume of feeds can be reliably determined. Earlier breastfeeding increases the likelihood that breastfeeding will be established and helps to increase milk supply. The first step is preparing for the weight. Wipe down the scale with a Virox wipe to ensure it is clean. Place a blue pad on the scale. Place the scale next to the crib or isolate, but not touching it, and landmark where it is placed with a piece of tape so that you will remember the exact placement for the post weight. If possible, try not to move the scale between pre and post weights, otherwise just try to make sure it is placed back in the same spot. Swaddle the baby in a blanket to reduce movement. Turn on the scale and wait for the beep when the zero appears in the screen. Place the baby on the scale, ensuring that no part of the blanket is hanging over the side of the scale. Keep your hand hovering over the baby. If the infant has leads or lines, disconnect any leads that can be disconnected briefly for the weights, such as the heart monitor, silence the alarms, and place the remaining part of the leads attached to the baby completely on the scale with the baby. For the lines that cannot be disconnected, place the heaviest portion of the lines under the infant's bottom and have the remaining portion hang off the side of the scale loosely in a precise location so that this may be replicated for the post weight. Have it hang over the center of the front of the scale to help with landmarking. Ensure there is no tension on the hanging portion of the lines. You can also have the heaviest portion of the lines running along the side of the infant and the rest of the lines hanging off the back of the scale. The most important aspect to remember when handling the lines is to make sure you are placing them the exact same way for the post weight as you did for the pre weight. Wait for the beep and arrow to appear beside the lock on the screen. Press 1 immediately to record the weight. The arrow will move to be low before feed. It is important to press the 1 to record the pre-weight while the infant is still on the scale because once the infant is removed, the scale will zero after 10 seconds. Remove the baby from the scale for the feed. The scale will automatically zero. Record the pre-feed weight on the breastfeeding record. For a baby who has leads disconnected, reattach the leads for the feed. Immediately after the feed, Bring the baby back to the scale. Ensure the scale is in the same position in relation to the crib or isolate as far as the pre-weight and the baby has everything with her on the scale as for the pre-weight, including the same diaper. Place the infant back on the scale in the exactly the same way as before. Wait for the beep and lock with your hand hovering over the baby. If you do not manage to get all the lines on the scale before it locks, just press reweigh fed baby and wait for the lock. Press two while the baby is still on the scale to input the weight for the calculation. Notice the arrow moves to after feed. Press three to see the weight gain. Notice the arrow moves to amount fed. Record the post feed weight and weight difference on the breastfeeding record. The amount shown in grams is equal to that same amount in milliliters. These scales have been proven to be accurate plus or minus two milliliters, which means it could be up to four milliliters different than the actual intake. Note, if you want to weigh the baby part way through the feed and then again at the end, you can use the reweigh fed baby button as many times as you want. Just ensure to press 2 after each time and it will continue to calculate the total in relation to the original pre-weight when you press 3. Please make sure to turn off the scale when you are finished. 
There are certain things that can reduce the accuracy of test weights. These include changing the baby's diaper between the pre-feed weight and the post-feed weight. Remember that we want the only change in pre and post weights to be the milk that is in the baby's belly. The urine or stool that is in the diaper was inside the baby for the pre-weight, so it needs to be included in the post weight. Leads or IV lines being held up during the weight. There is no way to know exactly at what level you are holding the lines, so it can easily be different for the post weight impacting the accuracy of the weight. Remember, if possible, the lead should be disconnected for the moment of weighing and the heaviest part of the lines that cannot be disconnected should be placed under the baby's bottom with the rest of the lines loosely hanging over the side at the same location for both pre and post weights. Change in clothing, blanket or pacifier between weights. If the baby had something on for the pre weight that is no longer on by the time of the post weight, just place it on the scale with the baby. Changing the position of the baby between weights. Have the baby's head on the same side of the scale for both weights. The blanket hanging off the scale can affect the accuracy of the weight. Having the same person to the weights can help with consistency and accuracy. The benefits of doing test weights include accurate estimation of milk intake and reduced overfeeding with top-ups. The disadvantages, over-reliance on technology that parents do not have at home, which can lead to a loss of confidence in breastfeeding without it. It is important to not overly rely on test weights for intake assessment. It is just one form of intake assessment and should be looked at in context of the other forms of intake assessment from part one of this video.